Hi everyone, I once again welcome you all to this Navigator series in which we have started to decode the current affairs preparation from the UPSC's perspective. So in the last video that you saw, we discussed about the prelims PYQs, we discussed about the various problems which the student face and what all is going to be in the series of the videos that we are going to come up with. So specifically, we discussed about the prelims PYQs and we talked about that what exactly uh, is to be prepared, how exactly things have to be analyzed, what are the various uh, topics that you have to read what are the various focus areas that you have to understand and how to make sure that your preparation is in the right direction, is in the right strategy. So we discussed how to analyze the prelims PYQ. I hope you would have done your homework, which we discussed in the last series that <clears throat> You have to take up the prelims PYQs and analyze what kind of themes, what kind of topics are there in the uh, uh, prelims paper and what is the exact question and focus areas which UPSC is asking. Fine. So make a list of it. If you haven't done it, I would suggest make a list of it and then come and watch this particular video because in this video, we are going to take up the mains PYQ. So welcome you all. Uh, here we are going to take up some of the mains current affairs based questions which have come up in the multiple years from the current affairs perspective and we'll talk about we'll see how exactly what is the psychology of examiner in asking current affairs question in the mains examination now mains is a huge chunk the it carries most amount of marks in the entire upsc preparation fine 1750 marks right so current affairs is a very very crucial and an integral part of the mains preparation not only directly yes there are direct questions of current affairs in the mains examination but indirectly in each and every point you are expected to substantiate those points with some kind of current relevance some kind of current happenings even in the questions of let's say history or questions like uh, subjects like geography so let's talk about a few mains question. Let's see what is the uh, psychology of UPSC. So let's take up a few questions from the society's perspective, from the society as a, as a syllabus. So if you read this particular question, you would see that the question is on urbanization. Okay, but the question is asking that does urbanization lead to more segregation and marginalization of the poor in the Indian metropolis? Fine. So the question is majorly on the current happenings. Now, urbanization is, it's not that urbanization has been happening. Definitely, urbanization as a trend has been there in India for the past many years. But right now we see is a rapid growth in urbanization. More than 35% population of India is now living in the, uh, you know, urban areas and it's, it is expected to go to 50%, right? 50% by 2050. Fine. So urbanization is an issue which is being talked about in India a lot but what is UPSC asking UPSC is first of all asking the impact of urbanization right that is what it is asking so the topic is urbanization the dimension is or the focus area is impact or the consequence of urbanization on impact on the poor in the urban areas so that is what is the specific thing which UPSC is asking. It is asking about the impact. It is not asking about the reasons. Definitely UPSC can ask about the reasons of urbanization. What are the reasons of rapid urbanization? So you have to give answer from the current relevance. Right now, what is the reason? Technological growth, let's say, or the focus of the government, multiple schemes, smart city scheme, or the uh, transit oriented development schemes in the budget this year, right? So the point is you have to give the reasons, the impact, the consequences, everything from the current relevance, though it looks like a question from the static portion. Urbanization is a very simply a topic which is mentioned in the GS1 syllabus of society, right? But you have to understand the question demands current relevance. That is what is to be understood. Okay, let's talk about the second question. Child cuddling is now replaced by mobile phones. Discuss the impact on socialization of children. Now, what is the theme of the topic? The theme of the question, the theme is child. Okay, that is the theme. What is the exact topic which we are talking about? Child and social media. Right? Child and social media is the exact topic on which the question has been Frame. Now, this topic is a current affairs based topic, right? 
दिस इज अ स्टैटिक थिंग चिल्ड्रेन पे तो देर आर सो मच ऑफ एनालिसिस विच यू वुड डेफिनेटली रीड इन योर स्टैटिक्स बट चाइल्ड एंड सोशल मीडिया इज द एमर्जिंग ट्रेंड बिकॉज ऑफ लेट्स ए डेटा प्राइवेसी बिकॉज ऑफ राइजिंग पेनिट्रेशन ऑफ सोशल मीडिया डिजिटाइजेशन मोबाइल फोन्स इन टू द इंडियन लाइफ और द लाइफ ऑफ पीपल अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड राइट ईच एंड एवरी पर्सन टूडे वुड बी हैविंग द मोबाइल फोन्स करेक्ट सो दैट इज हाउ द करेंट रेलिवेंस इज अटैच द स्टैटिक पोर्शन इन द मीन्स एग्जामिनेशन फाइन एंड हाउ दे आर रिलेटिंग इट चाइल्ड कडलिंग दैट इज अ society based aspect indian society based aspect the love that we used to give to children is replaced by mobile phone how technology present day technology is impacting the social cultures that we had so that is where the current affairs comes in so whenever what i'm trying to talk is whenever in the newspaper you see a new change happening a kind of shift from the traditional things which are happening in the society's relevance that particular topic starts becoming important from the means perspective let's take up another another example the next example is with respect to let's say marriage theek hai marriage again is a concept static concept you see marriage as a as a topic in your uh, gs1 syllabus society, society syllabus but what is the question the question is is marriage do you think marriage as a sacrament is losing its value in the modern india rising divorce rate present current affairs right so the question is asking whether marriage as a institution as a relation is losing its relevance in the modern india so attaching interrelating the static topic with the modern topic or with the current affairs so whenever some kind of change again it's about the new change which is happening in the society that is how you have to identify which question will become important next question suicides very common but suicides among young women is increasing in the indian society current affairs correct so suicides ke reason might be same but then with this you have to write the reason from the perspective of young women in the present day indian society so the characteristics of present day indian society is something that you need to know you need to know the characteristics of this right you need to know the circumstances of the present day young women for example the dual load dual burden they have to take care of their careers they have to take care of their home responsibility as well fine so so in the current context in the present society what are the reasons for young women to come in society static plus current affairs you need current affairs over here fine let's take up another thing static and current in terms of multiple themes fine for example terrorism static topic it's there in your gs3 internal security uh paper fine but what is asked that what are the aims and objective of the recently held no money for terror conference this is a current affairs this you would not read in the static portion fine so you have to have the knowledge of current affairs over here in the topic of terrorism which is a long issue since india's independence isn't it so you have to give out the major sources of ter- terror funding now in the present scenario the sources will start changing for example crypto right will become one of the very important uh, parameters as from where terrorism is getting its uh, fundings right so multiple new fund sources are getting created for terrorism and that is what is the expectation of this particular question that is where you need current affairs all right let's take up another another question uh, this question is on the unmanned aerial vehicles the uavs that drones which is there now drones have been there in news or have been there uh, in use for quite long but the use of drones for national security or or for the internal security purposes has increased recently now we see that uh, you see the dropping of weapons or supply of weapons from across the border into the india with the help of drones right multiple drones are shot india is trying to develop the anti drone system as well which is known as indrajal right heard of it so these things these things are coming in news so static portion internal security security issues combined with the present day security challenges you need current affairs over here so it's a static plus current wala thing take another example skill development 
a static question skill development has been there so now you read about skill development even in your uh, foundation classes you read about it in your books in your ncrts everywhere you would find skill development but what, what is the question it is about the success of the skill development programs about the success so they're not asking about the factual thing they're asking about the analytical thing because skill development now is a old issue so now it's more about analyzing this particular thing isn't it and then once they are succeeding what is the impact increasing the human resource to various sectors and what is the linkage between education skill development and employment you need the current trend with respect to these things okay you need the trend you need the analysis understood that is where current affairs is being used next question discuss the contribution of civil society organization theek okay? hai civil society groups civil ngos uh, civil society organizations sgs all these are very well read in the foundation classes or in the ncrts your normal textbook that you are reading what is the question right now the question is role of ngos or civil society in women's effective and meaningful participation in represent representation in the state legislatures definitely this particular question will have some kind of old examples as well it will have some kind of old examples as well but in the recent times also they would have played significant role right these ngos in the state legislative organization giving women the right to re get represented in the state legislative assemblies it will have a role that is where you are being asked the current affairs question so you understand in the news what you would get you would get some kind of example let's say this particular ngo is working in this particular region for women to get elected in the panchayats or for you know strengthening the political power of women or political representation of women in so and so area from there it should strike okay women uh, women reservation bill is also there so basically we are talking about women empowerment right we are talking about women empowerment and specifically in that we are talking about the political empowerment of women as a theme in india now when political empowerment as a theme in india is becoming important that basically means anything related to it will become important for the exams perspective that is why we saw the women reservation bill was also there in the prelims examination that we saw in the previous video right in this video we saw the again similar representation of women in the political arena theek okay. hai let's take up ir questions ir questions are majorly current affairs based question it's a it's a major uh, thing ir has almost everything comes from the current affairs because it's a very dynamic let's say india has relation with china or us or israel or the uh, african countries or the european countries or australia whatever it is or maldives so it's a very very dynamic thing it keeps on changing keeps on changing something or the other keeps on happening isn't it so that is why from ir's perspective current affairs is very crucial very very crucial theek okay? hai so what is the question sco organization so you need to keep in mind what are the various organization in which india is a part and in which india is taking a active role fine so nam is an organization in which india is not taking an active role now fine so probably the question will not come from there isn't it or let's say sark india is not taking a very active role over there but bimstech india is taking a role right or brics india is definitely very active over there or sco even over here india is active so the organizations where india is active which are serving india's interest have to be in your radar to understand what kind of question can come so they are talking about the issues with the sco organization and the functioning of organization theek okay. hai then next question is on the problems of or the uh, geo strategic importance of maldives so obviously maldives was in news uh, recently right uh, and india and maldives relation was strained a little bit so now the question has come in that particular uh, segment ki what is the importance of maldives if india maldives relation are strained then what is the importance of that what is the dependence of maldives on india what is the dependence of india on maldives in let's say uh, the indian ocean region all those kind of things right so it becomes important becomes important how it is important for the india's maritime security and regional stability theek okay? hai international competition competition from china right so these things are happening in the present in the current relevance that is why these questions are asked theek okay? hai 
now this is a very important theme whatever you see as a recurrent theme in the newspaper for example ai 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 is there in newspaper throughout right definitely question on ai you can expect now which dimension of that question will come whether ai's impact on health ai's impact on education or the overall impact on ai that is something which you have to judge that is a skill you get after analyzing the pyqs and analyzing the newspapers theek hai so over here i will i'll show you certain very recurrent themes on which question has been asked the first thing is let's say the care economy very much in news multiple editorials in the newspapers you would find about care economy fine it is compared now if one economy is a care economy the other one would be when you read about care economy you would understand okay there has to be something called a monetized economy right the economy that we have right now is a monetized economy so now what is the question okay definitely you need to understand what is the difference between care economy and the monetized economy definitely you need to understand that what is the importance of care economy for india theek okay, hai you have to understand that what is the importance right what are the steps let's say india is taking to ensure stabilization of a care economy fine what are the challenges which india would face uh, in ensuring that a care economy is there so these are the things so how can care economy be brought into monetize so the major challenge in india is monetizing the care economy the people who are involved in the care economy for the care of women or let's say the care of uh, the elderly right or majorly it's the women who are participants in the care economy they care for the other people right how do you monetize it fine then only women empowerment will come uh, happen right so you see everything is so much so well connected so what are the various how can this particular thing be monetized so they are asking about the solution or the way forward with respect to care economy right so it must be there in some or the other editorials fine you have to consolidate and then get the answer next question dam failures now this is something which people would say okay in infrastructure you can place this particular thing but uh, not often questions on dam was expected but then dam failure was so much in news and the bill with respect to it theek okay, hai which the government passed that was is so much in news that the question upsc asked this particular question and it was recurrent it was very much recurrent you will find the uh, this particular bill or this particular topic in almost every uh, newspaper uh, in in various magazines so recurrent theme you have to keep a tap on what is coming in newspapers regularly 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 that is where you will understand which topic will become important from the exams perspective theek hai again let's say a few more examples the uh, the example of digitization definitely digitization digital economy digital india these are recurrent themes so what can the upsc ask what is the let's say the status what is the present status of digitization what are the challenges which india is facing theek hai what are the various steps which india has taken so many apps india has launched uh, the digital public infrastructure uh, has has been launched for multiple digital public infrastructure like aadhar right upi those are digital public infrastructures right cobin app fine so the question can be there what are the various steps which the government has taken these kind of questions can be asked so understand it what is the status this is the focus area So when you read the question you get the topic the topic is digital digitization it is a recurrent topic what is being asked what is being asked is the status theek okay. hai what are the various problems so that's what i talked about challenges right and what are the various steps which the government is taking or what is should be the way forward simple means is very simple you pick up the right theme you understand the focus area where upsc will focus you create your notes in accordance to that you revise you are done that's what means examination with respect to current affairs is theek hai similarly competition commission of india it was in news because the penalties or uh, this thing that they are that they are putting on companies like google or amazon or apple like that isn't it it was in news it has been in news for the past 2 3 years now theek hai because of the rising importance or penetration of mncs in indian uh, system right so this is a news recurrent theme and therefore this particular question has been asked right environmental issues definitely always and always there in news fine with respect to pollution 
or with respect to let's say depletion of the natural resources so issues environmental issues whenever these issues are in use you have to understand what is the issue what is the status of it okay what are the reasons that we are not able to tackle this particular issue what steps needs to be taken and in fact in the steps you have to be very uh, careful about writing the innovative and technology based steps please understand please create your notes around it what are the various innovative and technology based steps which we can take to solve the environmental issues let's talk about the question so the problem of availability of fresh water resources issue fresh water issue okay the question of climate change very much in news climate change is a topic you would find in news every day every, almost every day you will find a news on climate change very recurrent theme so now you have to understand in climate change also there are multiple topics for example the topic of climate finance right Cl uh, topic of climate justice theek hai impact of climate change on the vulnerable section let's say the child or the women you have to prepare under these headings you have to see what is a trend in the newspaper understood that is how you have to prepare science and tech some initiative which the government has taken some steps for example the this is on chandrayaan 3 now chandrayaan 4 is in offings right venus mission is something which india is planning so these things will become important definitely they will be asked alternate energy emerging technology definitely a very favorite theme of upsc because india wants to become uh, self sufficient in terms of its energy it is it wants to diversify its uh, energy resources it has certain aims and objectives or certain targets to reach under under the paris climate deal right so because of those things india is focusing on the alternate energy so this question is on electric vehicles we saw the question in prelims on green hydrogen understood then emerging technology ai as we talked about ai is in news so multiple things on ai will be in news so over here they have asked about ai in health sector ai in the health sector and the issues of privacy ai definitely has multiple issues the issue of bias black box what kind of results it is it is giving recently only we saw that uh, google's uh, gemini has given the result that uh, to a to a, a particular person that you should please die so those are kind of issues which ai is facing the accountability issues right so when these things are in news you have to understand that they have huge probability of being asked in the paper so that is how you analyze that is how you analyze ki what can come fine let's take up a few questions in which i have discussed that uh, how do we compare the preparation based on newspaper and the preparation based on let's say classes so for example this particular question on very uh, very easy question uh, which was asked in this year's mains examination on the public examination prevention of unfair means act very simple we have to understand what is being asked aims and objectives have been asked definitely they will be asked because this is a very recent bill so analytical things will not be asked because there is nothing to analyze as such right because it it is still developing it is still getting implemented so they have asked a factual thing you have to keep this in mind new topics factual thing old topics analytical things right understood okay then the question is whether uh, they whether the university or the state education boards are covered in this particular act now if you have to cover or understand or make notes out of this particular topic from the newspapers you will have to go through multiple to uh, multiple uh, news articles right so i've given the example of two news two news articles which covered this particular thing but then uh, two three news articles you will have to read across the months and then you will come to a consolidated version but in the classes what you get is handouts is the explanation in the classes and therefore it becomes easier for you to get everything at one particular place right so in the classes you get the understanding in the current affairs classes and then you get the handouts fine so this makes the job easier rather than going to multiple links similarly in this particular question on disaster resilience very important question right so this particular theme disaster obviously is a static thing which is uh, which is uh, there in your uh, gs3 uh, gs3 syllabus it's specifically written over there disaster management so under disaster if they had to ask a static question they could have asked on let's say risk they could have asked on vulnerability right they could have asked on any other thing or they could have asked on one particular disaster let's say earthquakes or let's say floods right those kind of things they could have asked 
but what they asked is disaster resilience because it was in news because of CDRA right the disaster resilience infrastructure which India is part of very much part of right so India is trying to build we're trying to build disaster resilient infrastructure across the world and even in India so now the question is what are the components of it how it is determined what are the various elements of disaster resilience these are the questions but to find these particular things, you will have to go through multiple news articles and even they will not exactly be able to cover everything which the question had asked. Therefore, if you come to the classes, you will find that, you know, uh, in the handouts uh, where we give uh, this particular, uh, we talked about this particular uh, question also in the classes, in the smart current affairs classes at Vajiram and Ravi, right? And everything which was asked in the question was very specifically covered in this particular handouts fine so that is a difference that, which create get created when you join the classes and when you do the preparation on your own fine but we'll talk about it a little later similarly there's a question on artificial intelligence right which was asked in this year's examination fine to and the and the main focus was on administration it was a gs4 that's what i talked about in the starting of the video that these days even gs4 ethics is having current affairs question now this year we saw this even in ethics paper, we saw multiple current affairs questions, right? And in this question, it was specifically on AI in governance, AI in governance. Now, this is a theme. Now, earlier we saw a question on AI in health, right? This year, probably they can ask question on AI in education, right? They can ask it. And this is a theme, AI in governance. They can ask AI in cyber warfare or AI in warfare, use of AI in military, everything. It's increasing, right? So if you have to read about this particular topic, you had to go through multiple uh, topics in the news. Yes, it was too much in the news, but then consolidation, getting the right point from the news articles, creating your notes definitely is a hectic task. So if you come to the classes, you have everything very consolidated in the form of handouts and definitely explained in the classes that is the benefit that you get fine similarly easy questions like the digital uh, personal data protection act fine we you get the articles over there now you get the handout everything is covered in the handout which was asked in the question similarly the question on very important question the question on social media and the security challenge that they pose this year's mains examination now this is a very recurrent theme the impact of social media in the security dimension impact of social media on child impact of social media on any other dimension in elections but also impact of social media in security fine multiple uh, multiple news articles you had to read to reach that particular thing right but then in the classes in this handouts everything was covered in a very uh, proper and synchronized manner and the exact topic of social media and security implications was taken similarly these questions on groundwater water pollution all those things was very much covered in the classes okay with respect to the handouts as well as the lectures that we gave you so the point is the point is to understand what is the summary of this entire uh, video that we just had the summary is that in the mains examination right the thing is you have to find out the topic which is probable and it is very easy compared to the prelims examination uh, finding the probable topic in mains examination is comparatively easy right so find the topic which is easy it can be a recurrent th uh, topic it can be a topic where uh, which is static but having some current relevance right those kind of things any new social changes which is happening right those are the topics which start becoming relevant from the exams perspective there are limited dimensions or focus areas under which you have to read these topics right focus areas in which you have to read prepare them make your notes and you are done with the preparation so these focus areas and everything we'll talk about when we talk about the note making uh, portion of uh, in the coming videos right so you understand get the newspaper analyze the pyqs what is the effort that i want from your side is pick up the mains paper of the last five years pick out the current affairs question see the question put it under relevant theme of the syllabus and also analyze what kind of focus area UPSC is asking. What is the question it, which is being asked? Reasons, limitations, uh, consequences, solutions, challenges, issues. What are the questions which are being asked? Write down those questions. Limited focus area will be there. We'll discuss it. But you do it on your own before going to that particular video. Right? 
and then you understand that whenever you find a new topic you will read that topic in these particular focus areas only that will make the preparation shorter and more directional okay and more comprehensive as per the demand of the exam fine so that's for this particular video uh, thank you so much for patiently listening and uh, in the next video i'll talk about so now we have understood that uh, what are the questions what is the expectation of upsc in the next one we'll talk about what are the various sources now now we are entering into the domain of how to read it what to read and how to read so we'll talk about the various sources uh, various combination of sources how do we do it how to read the newspapers and everything from the current affairs perspective and we'll take up the note making and other questions in the subsequent videos so see you in the next video please do your homework take the upsc mains paper analyze the paper understand what is being asked from the upsc's perspective and then come and watch the next video all the best thank you so much